good morning welcome back to another weekly vlog uh we woke up today to snow <laughs> which we hadn't expected um i think there was quite a bit more before i had woken up because my mum said that there had been quite a lot more um but there was still a fair bit when i woke up i put a little video over the top of the back garden um yeah it's the middle of april and it's snowing um although to be fair now it's pretty much all gone the sun's come out and it feels a lot more like april again so yeah hopefully we don't get any more snow because i don't really want more snow um it's not i do feel for um like a lot of businesses are opening today and places like pubs and restaurants can only serve outside so when we saw the snow this morning i did feel for them a bit because you know <coughs> they've all <pre> <coughs> excuse me they've all prepared really hard um for this and <coughs> the snow will obviously make it a bit more difficult but i think yeah by lunchtime the sun was out and i'm sure people will be sitting outside um so yeah the rules have changed again today um <clears throat> we're now going into stage two of easing lockdown rules i'm just reading this because i want to make sure i get it right um yes yeah, so we're now entering stage two of easing some of the lockdown rules um so apparently from today um things that can reopen so it's all it's all non-essential shops are reopening um so basically anything that wasn't open before is now allowed to open uh hairdressers beauty salons and other close contact services restaurants and pubs um can serve food and alcohol to customers who are sitting outside you can't go inside yet gyms spas zoos theme parks libraries and community centers holidays in england in self-contained accommodation with members of the same household uh, you can make non-essential journeys between england and wales you can have weddings with up to 15 people funerals with up to 30 people and you can also have 15 people at a wake which i think includes indoors um, in certain places indoor children's activities um, residents in care homes can now have um, two visits a week so um or no sorry i mean two separate visitors um so i don't think i mentioned this um to see what that is um i don't think i actually mentioned this last week but um my grandma has moved into a care home um i won't go into like it too much because you know it's not my story really to tell um but yeah she she has moved into a care home now and so um visiting and stuff is is very different um i mean so she had been living in her own house um she was in like a, a sheltered accommodation type place with a warden but it was it was her own little bungalow and um i mean i haven't seen her for over a year most of us haven't but my dad and my auntie and uncle had been taking on kind of looking after her taking her to medical appointments that she had to go to sort of three times a week um all that kind of stuff basically they had been doing so she'd been seeing them quite regularly um whereas now that she's in the care home the rules are obviously very different they're a lot tighter and so to begin with she has only been able to have one person visiting her um which was my dad because we are the closest um but now from today you can have two different people visiting so um either my aunt or my uncle will be able to go in as well they can also do um they're called like called like pod visits i think um where basically they've got like a, a room which has got um a screen down the middle of it and they like my grandma would sit one side and then the visitors would sit the other side um and they can organize those as well they have been able to do that since before today um we haven't booked one yet because she's not been in long and she's just been trying to like settle in and everything um but with those um you don't have any kind of contact with them so i don't think you have to do a covid test for that one so like when my dad goes in to visit because he's actually going in and seeing her like face to face he has to do a rapid covid test um 
but I think with the pod visit, uh, yeah, with the pod visits, I don't think you have to do the COVID test. I mean, if you do, that then you do. Um, but we're hoping to get something like that booked in because I haven't seen her for over a year and I'm just desperate to see her now. And it would just be really, really nice even to see her behind a screen. I think they're also doing garden visits, although it depends on the weather. So um, yeah, but hopefully being able to have a few more visitors will do her the world of good, fingers crossed. Apparently driving lessons can already start, uh, can start as well and driving tests restart on the 22nd of April. And I think that's pretty much everything for now. Um, stage three, will happen no earlier than the 17th of May um, and that's when hopefully people can start to meet indoors again. So yeah that's where we are today, some quite big changes. Um, I, I, f I have a mixture of feelings about it I think. Um, I'm still quite nervous, um, you know I've been pretty much shielding apart from medical appointments up until recently and um, I do, I do just feel nervous about going back to kind of normality and or some sort of normality and and what that might mean um, but at the same time you know I, I understand how much effect this is having on people's businesses and livelihoods and so it's just trying to find a balance isn't it and you know I'm hoping that with the vaccine that that will help and that things can start to be a bit more open and that we don't go back into another lockdown again um, but I guess people just still have to be careful I'm not planning to sort of start going mad and going out and going to loads of shops and restaurants and bars and everything um, I'm just kind of doing things quite slowly and doing them in a way that feels comfortable for me I know people who various people who've been shielding and everyone's kind of doing things a bit differently some people are continuing to shield completely some people have stopped and have just kind of gone back to trying to be sort of what their normal life was before shielding and a lot of people are just kind of in the middle and just doing things quite slowly and, and that's kind of where I am um so yeah be interested to hear how you're feeling about things sort of reopening and whether you're gonna be going to any shops or be going out to the pub or whatever let me know be interested to hear how you're feeling about it all so this week i don't think is massively busy i don't have anything on today um or tomorrow <laughs> uh, or wednesday i don't think either no all three days are pretty quiet thursday we will have noah so it's still the east i can say the christmas holidays it's still the easter holidays so lisa is still off work um, so we're just having Noah one day a week to give her a day when she can catch up on work um, and everything else that she needs to do. So we're going to have him on Thursday this week. Hopefully, if the weather's good, I think we're going to go for another walk in the morning. And then I'm not sure what we're going to do in the afternoon. I've got a phone appointment in the afternoon um, with a psychiatrist that is linked to my gastro professor up in London um, apparently he's a psychiatrist that works with people who've got physical um, I don't know whether it's just physical digestive problems or whether it's physical health problems in general um, he works with um, people with physical health problems um, to kind of help with their mental health side of things and my my professor wanted me to talk to him just to see if um, anxiety could be linked to the swallowing difficulties that I'm having um, my gut feeling is that it's it's not I mean they've been going on now for at least three years I think Can't, it's probably longer um, and they have found an issue when they did the manometry but I think my professor just wants to kind of tackle things from all angles so I'm waiting to see other people as well but um, I've got a phone appointment with him on Thursday uh friday oh friday <laughs> friday's exciting um friday i am going to have my hair cut um it's like the one thing that i'm doing i think like now that things have reopened again um feeling a little bit anxious about it but then you know i have been for a haircut and stuff you know when things like reopened last year um so i know what to expect 
Um, it's a fairly small hairdressers and they take all the kind of precautions that are needed um, and my hair's just getting to a point where it's getting a bit too long for me to like comfortably manage it. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that and my mum's having hers done as well so I think she's definitely looking forward to it because she's got shorter hair so it's more, it's a lot more noticeable for her I think that her hair has grown a lot longer. <laughs> Um, and then I think Saturday and Sunday I don't have any plans either so yeah not a huge amount going on um, but it will be exciting to have a haircut so yeah that's the plan I'm gonna get on with doing some editing now and then I'll talk to you a bit later good afternoon not starting from my usual place in my office today um, today has been it's been a nice day um, but it's just kind of thrown me off a bit because it kind of just wasn't what we expected to like to happen um so yeah basically at lunchtime we got a little bit of a surprise visit from my sister-in-law and my niece um they'd kind of they'd messaged i think my mum or my dad i can't remember um to say could they pop in to have some lunch um my brother is doing some work locally and um they came down this way as well. I think they met up with Lisa and Noah this morning um, at the local park to have a little play and stuff. So they asked if they could come over here to have some lunch. Thankfully the snow has melted and the sun came out, although it is now raining. Um, but this morning it was quite nice and sunny, so that was good. Um, so yeah, I hadn't planned to see them today, but it was a really nice surprise. Nice to see my niece again. Um, it does just break my heart though, because um she was sort of coming over a bit and sort of saying like um she was sort of saying to me oh, like pick me up pick me up kind like cuddle and obviously we can't at the moment because you've still got a social distance and it's just really heartbreaking like having to say to uh well she's not quite two yet she'll be two in july june I'm terrible with dates um anyway she'll be two in the summer um but yeah it's just really like heartbreaking to sort of say to a two-year-old like sorry I can't I can't cuddle you <laughs> and saying no um you know obviously I know it's it's for the right reasons but it's not something that she's going to really understand and it does worry me a little bit that you know she's going to kind of think that I don't want to cuddle her um which is obviously not the case i would absolutely love to give her a cuddle i think the last time i gave her a cuddle was um it would have well it would have been like march last year possibly um like just before lockdown so she was a lot younger then um so i'm just really looking forward to the day when i can actually give her a big hug and yeah I would love to do that but it was lovely to see her and I, I really do appreciate being able to see them again in person because um, she's just so funny she just has us laughing all the time and she's she's just so chatty and she just yeah she's brilliant I love her um, so yeah that was really nice to see them um, and they've gone home now and I'm shattered <laughs> um, I think like certainly I think a mix have well a mixture of having my leg surgery um at the end of 2019 and then all the like lockdown and everything I would say I've definitely kind of deconditioned I suppose um you know my I'm not used to doing much at all really I'm I, I've, because I've been in the house for so long not really doing an awful lot um I think it's going to take a while to sort of try and build up my like what do you call it uh, I don't know I can't think of the word but um just sort of yeah build myself up again a bit you know I think um I, th I think I read a I think uh, I can't even, <laughs> I'm tired I can't get my words out um no I was watching I was looking on um chronically Jenny's Instagram which I'll link below and she was talking about like how um, with a chronic illness you, I mean obviously it depends what chronic illness it is, but like certainly with things like EDS and POTS and stuff like that, it can take you 
months, years to try and build up sort of strength and some sort of level of fitness. Not necessarily, I'm not talking about being like super fit or anything, but just, you know, having some sort of stamina and stuff. Um, and then within a matter of weeks, that can just be lost so quickly. And that's certainly something I think that I've experienced um, over the last year or so and it's something that I'm going to really have to try and work on um, as things start to open up again a little bit um, and yeah it's not going to be easy I don't think um, but even things like you know having my niece and my sister-in-law here um, I'm not I'm not used to like socializing or or seeing anybody that's outside of like our little family um and yeah I just don't think my body is particularly used to it so um it's just going to be a case I think of of building things up gent gently like I know that if I kind of you know go in too hard and do things too quickly then I'll just crash um because that's that's what my body does and that's how it works so I think just very, very slowly trying to build up, trying to kind of go out, you know, just on little wheelchair walks and stuff a little bit more. Um, and then, oh well, I mean, I've got physio exercises that I do for my leg, um, which are, I suppose, they're, well, they are quite simple. I suppose if, if a healthy person looked at them, they would look quite simple. Um, but they're not kind of working on, I suppose, my whole body. I used to go swimming once a week um, before I had my leg surgery, which is something I would like to try and get back to. It's just a bit tricky at the moment with my leg um, because I just didn't get on particularly well when I did hydrotherapy. And it would be good to try and just sort my leg out a little bit more first. Um, and also, I think, so the pool that I used to go to um, is like part of a retirement complex. And I don't think they're having people back in because of it being like, um, there's like a care home and then there's assisted living and stuff. Um, I just don't think they're doing anything like that at the moment because of COVID. Um, but it was a perfect, it was like the perfect place to go because the water was relatively warm. They had a hoist. It was easy to kind of access. Um the only issue is like it wasn't massively cheap but it was quite quiet and you know everything else was sort of perfect um so at some point it would be really good to be able to get back to that because that's one kind of exercise that i think suits me quite well i mean it, I, I still found it exhausting um i would say more so like the getting changed and getting unchanged and all of that kind of rigmarole but um, the actual kind of being in the water and floating was quite good for like my joints and stuff and just sort of building up a little bit of strength and stamina um, but yeah I think it's just it's just gonna be a case of doing things slowly and gradually and trying to get back to a bit of a better level of fitness and stamina um, than I was before but yes I am feeling rather exhausted now <laughs> um, so I can't imagine I'm going to be able to film much today now to be honest because I didn't really film well I didn't film anything this morning um, and I'm hoping to wash my hair later which I'm sure well so I woke up this morning and was feeling quite dizzy again not as bad as I was on Friday thankfully um, but I do still seem to be feeling dizzy um, but I have got a bit of a headache again so I am wondering if it's related um, but yeah, I could really do without feeling dizzy when I need to wash my hair. <laughs> um, just thank goodness for shower stools is all I'll say. Um, and my mum kind of will stay nearby as well just to make sure that I don't faint or slip or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I would quite like to get my hair washed this evening. So that's pretty much my plans for the day. Um, I think my mum is gonna pick up, I've got a, a boots order that I got delivered to our local store. Um, I mean, I say it's a local store, it's a pharmacy, which is owned by boots um, because I needed some toiletries and stuff. So I think she's gonna pick that up for me when she goes down to do um, the food shop. So hopefully I can show you that. 
but for now I'm going to have a bit of a rest and try and just replenish a little bit of energy so that I've got some energy to actually get my hair washed later. So I meant to show you this yesterday but just didn't get around to it. Um, but I tried one of these yesterday. It's the Mocha Coffee Hot Cross Bun uh, by Heston at Waitrose. And it was really nice. It has got a chocolate hot cross bun made with dates, sultanas and coffee. And yeah, it was really nice. I was quite surprised. Well, I wasn't surprised. I love mocha stuff. Um, but yeah, they're really nice actually. They're not cheap, like you get two. I can't remember how much my mum said they were. Um, but it's not like you have them every day. Um, I do struggle a little bit with dried fruit. Um, dates aren't the really the best thing to have, but as a as a one-off, and I just kind of prepare myself for the fact that I know I'm going to get a really bad tummy ache. Um, but yeah, no, it was nice. I don't know how much longer they're going to have these in waitrose, but if you like hot cross buns and you fancy something a little bit different, uh, give it a try. Good evening. So it's a little while later now. I've had my shower. Still feeling a bit dizzy, but not too bad. Managed okay. Um, I've just opened my boots order that my mum kindly picked up for me. So I thought I would just show you what was in it. I mean, it's not a hugely exciting order. Um, I just needed some necessities. Um, so I can decide whether to show these, but actually I just thought, you know what? I try and show what life is like with chronic illness and this is just part of it. So, just picked up some more incontinence pads because thanks to EDS, as well as needing to self catheterize, I also have the opposite issue as well. Um, I'm kind of, I haven't been using them that long. Um, I kind of put it off for quite a while, I think, just because, I don't know. I didn't want to kind of admit to myself that I might need them. I need to contact my bladder nurse um, because I got an appointment through to see um, my new urologist because my old one retired and that's not until November I think. So I think I might contact the bladder nurse and just see if she's got any advice or I don't know whether it's just something that I will have to kind of live with or whether there's anything that I can do to try and help it. Anyway, I've got some diff like a few different ones because I'm still just trying to work out what I like. I did get a couple of um, free samples from the Tenor website, which were the like the ones that are like underwear that you actually like pull up. And I wasn't massively a fan. Um, they're not really, I don't think for me. One, they are pretty expensive and if you're having to change a pad like more than like twice a day um it's gonna get quite expensive to do it that way and also i just i don't know i just i felt like i was wearing more of a nappy rather than with a pad it doesn't feel quite so much like that that's just for me i know for some people they work but for me it wasn't it wasn't right so i've got some tenor discreet extra plus i mean i found that incontinence pads just seem to be really flipping expensive um which is frustrating because it's not really like something that i want to be buying <laughs> um you know i don't really like wetting myself and <laughs> not being able to get to the toilet in time and stuff um so it just feels like a bit crap that you have to spend money on incontinence pads. I've also got this duo pack of Tenor Discreet. These are just the extra ones. I'm, yeah, as I said, I'm still trying to work out like what uh, sort of size I need and what works best. And then I think what my favourite ones are at the moment are the Always Discreet Long, which are these ones. Um, these, I, I think I prefer these. I need to try the tenor ones again because I can't actually remember what they were like. Um, but I think these were the kind of ones that I preferred. Um, they just seem to work best for me. So that was that lot. Um, I then needed some conditioner and 
I, I mean, I've never seen so much conditioner on boots. It's like, how do you choose? Um, but I found that they had started doing conditioners by Aveeno. Um, I use Aveeno to moisturize like my legs and my feet because they get quite dry. And I just thought I'd give it a go. They had quite a few and I was reading the different like reviews of them and stuff. And this one seemed to have the best reviews and I thought I'd give it a go. So it is um, Aveeno Gentle Moisture Plus Rose Water and Chamomile Blend Conditioner for dry hair. I don't really know what type of hair my hair is. It's just, I don't know, just, it doesn't particularly get greasy. It does get a little bit dry. Um, so we'll see how it goes. It's pH balanced, pH balanced, clinically proven, made with colloidal oat, whatever that is. Um, and this is what it looks like. They were on offer, so I was like, yeah, we'll go for that. I also needed um, some new heat protection spray because I usually just give my hair a spray of heat protection before I use the hair dryer. The one I use at the moment is a VO5 one and I couldn't find it on Boots. Um, I think I usually got it from Tesco's, so either they only sell it in Tesco's or they've just stopped selling it. Um, but I looked at the other ones and I've gone for this one, which is a Tresemme one. Um, it is a keratin smooth, protects up to 230 degrees Celsius. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's more for like, if you're like straightening or curling your hair, which I don't do very much. Um, but I do just like to give it a little bit of protection when I use the hair dryer. Uh, it's got marula oil, five benefits, one system, up to 72 hours of frizz control, silky shine, perfectly detangles, soft feel, and tames flyaways. And this is what it looks like. So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it was kind of a reasonable price compared to some of the others. Um, I mean, some of them were like over £20 and I was like, I can't spend over £20 on a heat protection spray. Um, I also needed a new face scrub. And again, I was like having a look through and this one was on um, offer. It had, I don't know, a few pounds off it or something. So I thought I'd give it a try. So it's the number seven, Radiant Results Purifying Intense Pore Scrub. Radiant and healthier looking, shine free skin. Uh, it's got vitamins C, E and B5 and Meadow Sweet, whatever that is. And it's suitable for sensitive skin. And yeah, I thought I'd give it a try. I like, I like number seven products and it had good reviews again. So I tend to read the reviews quite a lot because it's just so hard to check, like work out what one to go for. But this one sounded good. So I'm gonna give that one a try and uh, see what I think of it. And then the last thing that I bought is really exciting. Um, basically I, for quite a long time now, I have been having trouble with a dry mouth, dry eyes. Um, I went to see my optician, I mean this was a few years ago now, and um, I said that I told them that I'd been getting dry eyes and when she did the examination she said that um, the, oh, it had a name, basically like the, um, the glands that are in your eyes that produce an oil um, didn't seem to be really working. And so she recommended that I asked my GP to prescribe um, some sort of like eye drop to help my eyes kind of give them some moisture. So I get, um, it's an eye gel that I get prescribed by my GP, which I use at least twice a day, um, maybe more, it depends like how dry they're feeling. Um, and then when I spoke to my GP about having a dry mouth, she said that you can get like, um, artificial saliva type stuff. So I just had a look when I was on Boots and they had a couple of things. They had a couple of mouthwashes, um, but I already use a mouthwash and I just wasn't really sure how much that would help. And, and I, when I read the reviews, they didn't seem to like help for very long. Um, but this was the thing that seemed to have the best reviews. It wasn't cheap, so we'll see if it works. I think it was about seven pounds, which is a lot for what it is, but if it helps, that would be great. Um, I will need to check whether I can use it when I get my Invisalign bracelet braces, um, but 
if it helps, especially at night, I wake up with really dry mouth and it's horrible. Um, but it's, I think it's a, yeah, it's a gel. It's called Bioten. Um, for people with a dry mouth, it helps provide protection against dry mouth, helps moisturize oral tissue, and it gives long lasting relief. And from the reviews, it seemed to be the best one that I could find. I'm gonna give it a try. This is the one that I am trying. I'll let you know if it's any good. If not, then I'll have to try something else, I guess. Um, but yeah, it would just be nice if like, I could find something that just, because I, I find like I'm drinking quite a lot just to help with my dry mouth, but I find like I can't drink huge amounts at once because my stomach just can't take it and it just makes me feel ill. So if that can help, that would be great. And that was my little, little haul. I don't know, I wouldn't call it a haul. It was just a few bits that I needed to get. Um, and now I'm gonna get myself a cup of tea and sit on the sofa and watch a little bit of, actually I think my dad and I might watch um, A Silent Witness um, and then head to bed. Good morning, happy Wednesday. I don't really have much to update this morning, to be quite honest. Um, it's quite a nice day. It's kind of clouded over a little bit now, but it was quite sunny this morning, but it's still quite cold. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping it'll be like this tomorrow. Um, we've got Noah tomorrow, and we're hoping to go out for a walk in the morning to see some of the houses on the Easter Trail, um, because that finishes on Friday, so it'll be good to get out and see a few of them. We've had a look at the map, and worked out like an area that we can try and do um that's got like a few that are close together so the weather forecast says it's going to be sunny fingers crossed that <laughs> that's correct um we'll just have to wrap up warm i think and i'm sure he will ride on my knee at some point because that's what he loves to do <laughs> um but yeah today is a fairly standard day of not really any plans um i tried that um like mouth gel last night from my boot solder um and i didn't wake up with a dry mouth so that's a plus um it'll be interesting to see because like i've obviously only used it one night um whether that was a fluke or if i continue to use it and that continues to be the case um that would be good um so yeah i'll keep i'll keep you updated um but today i'm just trying to get on with some editing because i'm not quite sure i didn't manage to get any done yesterday because of the um surprise visit from my niece um tomorrow we'll have noah so i doubt i'll get anything done tomorrow friday i'm having my hair cut in the afternoon so i might get a bit done in the morning but i need to try and get a decent amount done today and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. There's not not a lot going on today, so um, yeah, <laughs> nothing massively exciting, I'm afraid. So my mum went over to Tesco's today to do a bit of a food shop, and one of the things that she picked up were these. Um, sorry, you can't actually see the whole packet because <laughs> we've already had some. Um, but they are basically hash brown potato waffles. Um, these are the mini ones, so they're the bird's eye like mini waffle type ones i think that uh iceland do the full-sized hash brown waffles um but i had a few for my lunch and they were very nice it's a bit strange it's kind of like they're not quite a hash brown but they're not quite a waffle they're kind of somewhere in between but yeah they were pretty good i quite like them i'm not sure how my tummy's going to feel about them because i tend to find with hash browns because they've got onion in them um it just doesn't sit too well with my tummy. starting today from 
outside the house which is exciting um we've got noah today and we've decided to take him for a little walk this morning we're gonna try and do a little bit of the easter trail that i organized for the community with the help of another lady um so we've come down to the church because this seems to be quite a good place for quite a few different places um so yeah we're just getting my chair out and noah and my mum are on their way down because we can't all fit in one car at the moment um and then we're gonna have a little walk it's it's sunny but it's still quite chilly but as long as it stays dry i'll be happy so yeah hopefully we can have a nice walk this morning and then we've got something else to do a bit later <laughs> I'll talk to you about later and now Noah and I are making well what are we making Noah <laughs> what are we making just playing with the sharpie which is slightly concerning um <laughs> good boy what are we gonna make uh, what heart yeah but who's it for mummy what why are we making mummy a heart because it's her birthday. That's right, we're going to make a lovely card for Mummy. I've also, mm -hmm. I found something on Pinterest but I couldn't print it out so I kind of copied it. Um, which we're going to fill in like some little questions about Mummy and he's going to colour in this little lady down here and stuff. But we're going to do the heart first. So we're going to do something that's a little bit like this again. I <laughs> uh, found this on Pinterest so... We thought he, he loves gluing and sticking and cutting, so we're going to do that, aren't we? Do lots yeah. of sticking and cutting. And yeah, we're just going to make a lovely card for Mummy. So don't eat the glue. Eww. It'll Mom. stick your mouth together. So we've got. No, I'm going to do this and put it in my mouth and spit it out. Oh, lovely. Right. Um, we've got a load of stickers. We have got lots of different coloured tissue paper. Oh. So, what should we should we cut up some tissue paper first? Yeah. What colour would you like first? Orange. Orange? But your paper's orange. <laughs> I don't know if we've got I'll have a look and see if there's any orange in here, but I'm not sure if there is. Um we've got yellow. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, should I get some yellow out? Yeah. Okay. Right, so shall we stick some tissue paper on first? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and then we'll do um, the stickers. Yeah, but first of all, you need to rip it up into little pieces. So what colour? Yeah, what colour are you going to do first? Uh, purple. We've got pink. Pink. Pink, is that all right? Yeah. Right, go on then. You rip some little bits up that we can stick on. Why is this? Whoa, and then you have to scrunch them up into little balls to stick. So can you scrunch that one up for me? Right, so where would you like to stick that one? Oh, careful, don't fall off the chair. Okay. Go on then, you put a bit, it's got to be inside the heart. So oh. you, you stick a bit of glue on there and then you can, oh, that's a lot of glue. And then can you stick, stick your um, tissue paper on some of that glue? Fabulous. I some more. Yeah, so what colour would you like to do now? 
More pink? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that was a big rip. And that's it, you scrunch it into a ball. See, you did rip it, so you can turn it into you. That's right. Yeah, that's why you ripped it. Oh, was it? I think yeah. I thought I just ripped it by accident. <laughs> This under. I know we're going somewhere into the danger zone. It all points right to that. I set myself aside. questions and then I'll write the answers and then you can colour in mummy and make this what's, look pretty. What's he, what's he I think he's just having a sniff of everything. He's having, he's sniffing the glue at the moment. <laughs> so I need to say it says my mummy by so what's your name? Noah Henry Cole. Noah Henry Cole. Do you know how you spell your name? I do. How do you spell Noah? Ah uh, or oh, huh. Ooh, very close. Uh, Lenny, no thank you. Right, so your first question is, it says my mummy's name is, what's your mummy's name? Uh, mummy Lisa. Mummy Lisa. So we'll pop mummy. Now then it says, my mummy looks beautiful when? So when does your mummy look beautiful? When she is a monster. When she's a monster? Yeah, when she when she is not dressed, she looks like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's not when she looks beautiful, is it? Yeah. She looks beautiful when she's not dressed and looks yeah. like a monster. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, my mummy is really good at what's your mummy really good at? Um we're good at drawing with me. Oh, that's nice. What does mummy say to you? I love you, shark. Um, I love you, shark. Fabulous. Sharky. Sharky pants. Sharky pants? Do you want me to write that? Yes. Yeah, I love you, sharky pants. <laughs> I love you, sharky pants. I love my mummy more than. What do you love, mummy, more than? Food. More than food. Yeah. Whoa. Good morning. Apologies if you can hear the dogs barking. The window cleaners here at the moment, so they're going a little bit crazy. Um, yeah. I didn't really film. Well, no, I didn't film anything else yesterday after Noah had gone. I. I was exhausted. Um, we had a lovely day. We like we had a walk in the morning, which was really nice, and we made a card for Lisa, which she really liked. Um, and Noah said that he had a good day, so that was good. But yeah, I was I was just so tired, and I lay on the sofa after he'd gone home. And next thing I knew, I was waking up, and it was eleven o'clock, and I was like, oh, didn't plan on sleeping until then. Um, I'd woken up, I think, because I'd set my alarm when my medication was due, and I think I'd woken up and taken that. Um, slightly concerning that I don't really remember taking it, but it, it wasn't in my like little dosset box anymore, so I must have taken it. Um, but yeah, I just woke up, woke up at like I think it was about quarter to eleven or something, and I was like, oh crap, <laughs> that's really not great. Um, and then this morning I slept until quite late as well, so I think my body is just struggling to get used to doing things again. Um, but yeah, I've woken up this morning with a bit of a headache, which I could really do without because I am going to get my hair cut this afternoon. Why do the lights keep going on and off? Something's not right. Um, 
yeah, I'm going to go and get my hair cut this afternoon. Um, and also my mum is, she's after me, so I possibly will have to hang around until she's finished, I think, because I don't think there'll be time for her to bring me home before her appointment. Um, but I've got my book that I'm going to take with me, so I'll have a read of that. Um, that's why I've not got any glasses on, because I've got my contacts in, which feels very strange, because I can't remember the last time I wore them. Um, but yeah, I haven't done a huge amount this morning. I've just been doing a bit of editing. I don't like these lights going on and off. Um, yeah, I've just been doing a little bit of editing and um, imported some more footage off a memory card. So I've got a little bit done, not a huge amount. Um, I'm gonna go and grab some lunch now before I have to go out and get my hair cut. Good afternoon. So I've had my hair cut. It still needs to have a colour. My roots are not brilliant, but it feels a lot better for a cut. She took quite a bit off the length. Um, I just, I don't, I, I like having long hair, but it just doesn't sit particularly well um, because my hair is so fine um, and straight. It just pulls it down. And I find just having it a little bit shorter just gives it a little bit more kind of bounce. Um, I mean, not a huge amount, but is better than it was um so yeah i've had a nice nice cut a treatment and it just feels a bit fresher and it's also one less time that i have to wash it which is brilliant um and then my mum had her her appointment straight after mine um so i just sat and read my book while she had her hair cut and she's feeling a lot better now for hers um she's just popped into the chemist to pick up a prescription and then we're gonna head home I'm going to take my contacts out, which I'm looking forward to because like contacts are great and I I think I would wear them more if I was going out more. Um, but I, th I just find because my eyes are quite dry, I get quite uncomfortable after a while and I've tried various contacts and these ones are the best ones for me so far um, with like the moisture levels and stuff. But um, yeah, I still find that like, they just get a little bit uncomfortable after a while. So... I'm looking forward to taking them out, putting my glasses back on, and then I'm probably gonna go and just have a little sleep on the sofa, try not to sleep as long as I did yesterday because yeah, didn't don't wanna lose another evening. I need to, I've got stuff that I need to do. Um so yeah, feel good for having my hair done. It felt really weird as well, just being out and talking to people that don't live in my house. Um it was just it was quite nice it just it just felt like i wouldn't say it felt normal because you know there's all the sort of restrictions in place of, of masks and you know screens and all these kind of different things but it just was nice to do something that was outside of the house that felt a little bit more normal um so yeah i feel feel better for it um but now I'm exhausted. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just waiting for my mum and then we're going to head home. Good morning, happy Saturday. It is a really beautiful day outside again today. Uh, the sun's shining. It's a little bit chilly still, but it's just nice seeing the sun and it feeling a little bit more like spring. Um, yeah. I feel okay, not too bad today. Um, I actually feel quite motivated today, which <laughs> is not is not usual. Um, well, no, that's not true. I feel motivated quite a lot. It's just that my body doesn't seem to like to keep up with what I want to do. Um, but hopefully today I can get a few things done, which would be good. A um, couple of things I was going to tell you. First thing is, I finished a book. <laughs> Um, which might sound like absolutely nothing to a lot of people who read a lot um, but ever since I had my leg surgery back in uh, November 2019 um, it just seemed to well completely wreck my health um, I went, well I mean my health wasn't great beforehand but um, it's definitely made things harder and I think that and a mixture of like all the lockdowns and everything um my health just hasn't been very good and i've been really really struggling to read and oh my voice getting a bit funny um i have always been someone that has enjoyed reading ever since i was little um i'd always have books and i would always get through them 
like not like really quickly I can't read that fast but I would always kind of read a fair amount um and so yeah when I had my surgery and was sort of trying to recover and my body's just been struggling a bit I've just found it really hard to concentrate my my brain fog seems to have got a lot worse um since the surgery and lockdown and my concentration just has not been very good at all um and I've just really really struggled to, to get reading done so it's taken me a long long time to read this book um but I finished it this morning and I feel very happy with myself that I've actually finished a book um so yeah this is a it's dream a little dream by Giovanna Fletcher it took me a little while to get into it um I read I've read one of her other books uh which is called Billy and Me I think it's in the back here yeah Billy and Me and I really like that like from the beginning I got into it really quickly um this one took a lot, yeah it took a lot longer to get into I wouldn't say that I enjoyed it as much as Billy and Me but like once I'd kind of got into it I was quite enjoying it and it was quite an easy read in that it didn't sort of take a lot of concentration to follow the story and stuff like that so it was actually quite good I think for where I'm at at the moment um but yeah I did enjoy it and very excited that I finished it and I can now move on to another book um so yeah that was a little a little plus for me today that I've managed to do that um I've also got a little Disney order to show you which came uh when did it come Thursday I think it came but I've only I opened I only opened it yesterday um so the reason i made the order was because the um pin came out for the it's a small world key um i had thought that this was going to come out on the same day as the key but it didn't um so i'd just been i'd actually forgotten about it to be honest um but i keep an eye on the disney website just to see what's coming out and this popped up the other day and so i thought yep yeah, I shall get that because I collect the little key pins so this is what it looks like I like the backing it's really cute and then which way up that way up I mean I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this but yeah it's basically a copy of the larger key and I really like it I think it's really sweet um so that was 10 pounds um and then I've been umming and ahhing about this next set of pins for, well, since as soon as they came out. Um, and I kept putting it off and they've still got them. And so I thought, do you know what? I'm going to treat myself to them. So I went for these ones, which are the I Love My Dog or Disney Dog pins. Um, they do have a cat version as well. And I was kind of trying to decide which ones that I like the best. And I decided on the dogs because I just... I don't know, I think I preferred the pins over the cat ones. Um, but they were £20 for five pins, which is quite good actually for Disney. Usually you would pay more than that. Um, and I just thought they were really pretty. Like a lot of them are quite sparkly. And I love this one in the middle with all the different dogs on it and the backing as well with Pluto at the top. It's just really cute. Um, so yeah, I need to decide I mean, I need to put some pins on my board. I haven't quite got there yet. Um, but with stuff like this one, I need to decide like whether I'm going to take the individual pins off and put them on the board or whether I'm going to keep them on the backing. Um, and if so, how I'm going to display them. Um, and so because I got those two, um, I hadn't actually planned. Ooh, I hadn't actually planned to get um, this key because I just wasn't that fussed by it. But because I'd spent over £20 on the day that this key came out, um, I decided that I might as well get it. So it is the first anniversary uh, key for Disney+. Plus. Um, I mean, it's not a massively exciting looking key. It's very, very plain. Um, just as first anniversary and Disney Plus on the end. But I do collect keys and generally I only collect the ones that I really like. But if I've spent twenty pounds, I thought I might as well, might as well go for it because it's free. Um, and I did get Disney Plus. I didn't get Disney Plus right when it came out, I don't think. But I think I have now had it for about a year. Um, so I thought I'd go for it. I've also found on Etsy. I don't know if I can find it to show you because I've been trying to decide how I'm going to display my keys. 
um, because it would be nice to be able to actually see them. Yeah, here we go. And um, I've been like looking around and I've seen a few people post pictures. So I was looking on Etsy and I found these like stands. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well. I'll link it below so that you can check it out. Um, and you can like put the keys on there like that. Um, I'm going to be keeping the tags on so I don't know how it's going to look if I put them on there like that. Um, but I just thought if I can get my shelving up in here that this would be quite a nice way to display the keys so that you can actually see them. Um, you can get that. You can also get um, just like individual stands. So there's like, there's like this one um, which has actually got a place to put the like, what do you call it, tag. Um, but I think I would prefer to go with like one stand that takes a few rather than having to buy lots of individual ones and they all come in like different colours and things like that but that's my thinking at the moment. Um, you can also get like things that you put on the wall to hang them but I just don't have like huge amounts of wall space so I'm not sure if that would work. So that's my thinking. Today um, I need to finish editing a weekly vlog, I've nearly finished it, I just need to put some music to some of the bits of it. I also need to film um, some clips because Chronically Jenny, who I will link below, um, is doing one of her EDS Awareness um, Month, like, what do you call it? <laughs> EDS Awareness Month, like, awareness raising videos and um, I've said that I'd like to take part so she has sent over some like questions that she wants us to film ourself, ourselves answering and also I think she's doing a reel this year as well so I'm going to try and film for both of those and send them over to her because I think she wants them by tomorrow. Um, that's my two jobs. If I can get those two things done anything else will be a bonus. Good evening. So it's a little while later since I last spoke to you. Um, I got my things done this morning although I didn't get my weekly vlog uploaded but it is exporting so we nearly got there. Um, I had lunch, had a bit of a nap and we're now making a mushroom stroganoff. Um, if you've seen anything else that we'd made um, you'll know that I quite like mushrooms because we've made a mushroom as also as well. Um, but yeah, my sister actually had mushroom stroganoff when she was in hospital and said she really liked it. So we thought we'd give it a go because I haven't had a stroganoff for ages because I don't really like beef. And um, yeah, found a, a recipe for mushroom stroganoff. So we're going to give it a try and see what it's like. Um, so I thought I'd show you how we make it. So this is the recipe. I found it on Pinterest, but it's a Sainsbury's magazine recipe. Serves four, um, takes about 35 minutes overall and I'll link it below so that you can see all the ingredients and stuff but we've never tried it before so we shall give it a go, see what it's like. So to begin with we are cooking the onion and the garlic in some hot oil for about five minutes um, until it's soft but not coloured um, and then after that we've got to add two types of paprika and cook for a couple more minutes. So we're now putting in a quarter of a teaspoon of each of these types of paprika. So once you have cooked the paprika through with the onions for a couple of minutes, we now need to empty the onions into a bowl um, and then we can get on with the rest of the recipe. He then says to pop a bit more oil in the pan and heat that up to cook the mushrooms. But in the comments, someone suggested using butter instead. So we've popped a bit of butter in there, which is now melted and we're now putting the two types of mushrooms in. We've got to cook these for about five minutes until they're golden brown. We've now re-added the onion and garlic and paprika and just mixing that through with the mushrooms. adding 200 ml of white wine. We're using the Oxford Landing one that we used for the risotto because it's really good. And we've now got to reduce this by a third. So 
So I've turned down the heat now and we're adding half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. <laughs> I can get it to go in. Um, and also 200 mils of vegetable stock, which I'm just going to pop in. And then we've got to let this bubble away for a few minutes. Give it a nice mix. So that's been bubbling away for a few minutes. I'm now going to add 200 mils of creme fraiche. So the sauce is a little bit runny. Um, one of the comments did say that they had to add a little bit of corn flour, so we're just doing that to try and thicken it up a little bit. Last but not least, we're going to add in a little dash of lemon. Um, it does say half a lemon, but we're just using this. And then it should be ready. quiet Sunday so far um not done an awful lot really um watched the virtual church service this morning did my medication the same old things that I do every Sunday um and then I had a fairly quiet morning we've had um, our lunch together and now I am curled up on the sofa I think I might watch some Call the Midwife because I haven't watched it for ages and there's a new series coming out uh is it this week or next week and I'm still, I'm still quite behind and I'd quite like to catch up. So I've just put Netflix on um, and I need to hope that it's actually still got what I last watched because I can't remember where I got up to. Um, yeah, so I'm going to watch that and I've just got a few bits and bobs that I need to get done on my laptop and things like that. So I'm going to do that um, and then probably fall asleep after a little while. Good evening. I'm just heading to bed and thought I'd come on to end the vlog. Um, sorry that I haven't really filmed much today. It's just been a really quiet Sunday. Um, I watched a bit of Call the Midwife and got a few admin bits got done on my laptop. Um, I had a bit of a sleep and then my dad and I have just watched an episode of Silent Witness. We've only got one left now, so I hope they bring out the new series soon. Um, but yeah, I've just been trying to take it quietly today because next week feels like it's going to be fairly busy or like busier than what I'm used to for quite a while so I just wanted to try and preserve some energy today but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog if you have and you'd like to see more from me please give me a like and subscribe to my channel also hit the notification bell that means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything leave me a comment let me know how you're doing this week what you've been up to and also let me know if there's any particular videos you'd like to see me do, or any topics you want me to cover. Um, it just helps to know what kind of things you'd like to see. Also, come follow me on social media. My links are in the description below, but I'll pop my Instagram and Twitter up here. Those are the two platforms that I'm mainly on, so do come over and say hello. I'm replying to comments on those and on my YouTube as quickly as possible. Um, I've got a little bit of a backlog that I'm trying to get through, and it just depends how my health's doing as to how quickly I can get through them. But I really appreciate anybody that leaves a comment, so it'll be lovely to hear from you. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!